Hello, and thank you for joining me on our guided project. Today, we're going to be predicting credit card approvals, and this is a data set from Kaggle. So today, we're going to be focusing on logistic regression. So what we'll do first is we'll import the our mount, our Google Drive, and then import our libraries. So I'm just going to connect this to a Google Drive, and we're going to have to give it permission here. So connect to Drive. Yes and permissions. And so from, from this, you just go google.colab import drive, drive.mount. And the you can call this whatever you want, but the common sense is content slash G drive. And you just want to keep this the same for every time so that when you're importing your library, you can see your content G drive. I'm importing it from the same directory or using the same directory that I assigned up above. So what we'll do first is we'll import our data frame from a CSV file that's in our Google Drive. So pd.read and then our file path right here. So you'd have to change this. But to load up the file, what we'll do, what, it, what a typical first thing that we want to do is we just want to make sure we loaded up the correct data set. So we'll go df.head just for quick little inspection of the data. And we can see here we have gender, age, debt, married, and a few customer statistics for this bank for the credit card approvals. And then what we want to do, another typical thing is, okay, so that's great. We have this data. We can see that age should be a numeric feature. Industry should be uh, an object or a string data type. So what we want to do is to confirm that we're seeing what we expect in terms of our data heads that will affect how we do the pre-processing. We run df.info. This also gives us a look at how many non-null features. So we want to see that they're all, and we can see here that they're all non-null. But a more important thing that we see from using .info is the data type. So integer floats, generally those will be handled in the same way, but objects, we have to make sure that we're not seeing an object in say the age in a numeric feature. And so everything here seems correct. We're seeing the objects where we should see objects. Okay, so starting off our exploratory data analysis section or EDA, a quick little easy way to get a brief or quick understanding of our data set is using dot describe. So we go df dot describe on the nice data data five point distribution of our continuous features or our numeric features. You can see age, gender, we see it's mostly gender one and then zero would be the other gender and we don't see that as much. So and then age we see here as well, we, the maximum age is 80, the youngest is 13 years, hopefully he didn't get approved for a credit card. But we can see all of these here and we can just get some quick insights into our data and we can also see that the count nine, 690 for all of them, we're not missing any features. So there's be a quick little inspection that we can do right here. But we didn't, we only did numeric features. If we wanted to then plot some non-numeric features, we go df.describe and then include objects. So we want to include an object data type so we can run this. We get industry, ethnicity, and citizenship. We can see how many unique values there are and how many features um, that we might want to use for our machine learning workflow. So we can have ethnicity five. Citizenship could be a good one because we only have three different categories. So another important thing that we want to do, now we've gotten a sense of our data, is we want to get a sense of our null values. It seems we were getting evidence that there was not any null values, but we just want to confirm this. So we go df dot is null, and then dot sum. So it's going to sum up every column, and then we would get a series here with the columns as indexes. So gender of zero, zero, we get zeros across the board. So very good. So no null values that we need to deal with this time. Okay, what we can see here is we're going to go through all of the, we're going to do a for loop to plot the distributions of all of our data. So what we want to do to start off is we want to go if, so we're going to go four feet in call, df column. So for every column name, so approve income zip code, we're going to do the following workflow. So we're going to go for or if df and then feet inside dot d type equals let's go object 
So if it's an object, we want to do a certain plot. So we're going to go SNS dot count plot. We're going to go data equals df dot feet. Okay. So data equals df dot feet. And then what we're going to do is else. So if it's not an object, we know that it's going to be a numeric feature because our data type, that's really all that's left. So we'll go else and we'll go df feet dot plot. And then in kind, we're going to do kind equals bar. It's going to be a nice little plot. And then what we're doing here down below is we're going to give the title of the feature. We're just adding here a line break in front so we can see get a little space on top of the name. And so let's run. Oh, and I forgot to do this has to be dual. This has to be a logic sign. So two equal signs right up here. Okay, so let's run this. Data equals df, x equals feet. So almost the same. Should give us a nicely a nicer plot here. Okay, let's run for a second. We should actually do just notice that it's not playing over. Let's do a hist here. Let's see if that looks a little bit better. There we go. Get some much nicer plots. Okay. So we have gender, we can see zeros and ones, we have a lot more ones, we get age, we have a kind of exponential type distribution, more of a tail on the right hand side, debt, we have a kind of exponential distribution as well. Married, we have an imbalance between not married and married. Bank customer as well, we have an imbalance between not bank customer and bank customer. We can see the industries, we have quite a few industries, quite a few ethnicities, and years of employment, Prior default seems to be equal, equally balanced, and employment seems to be pretty equally balanced as well. You can see here we do have the exponential type or a long right-hand tail for credit score as well. So driver's license. And we can see here that we have pretty equal balance between yes and no, and then citizenship we have by birth, it being a very imbalanced but the larger data set. So here we go. So zip code as well. And then income again, we have a little bit of a tail. So we'll have to deal with some of these outliers. We can see that here, we're getting a lot of information, a lot of imbalances and a lot of uh, tails or exponential type distributions. Okay, so just to quickly inspect our um, object data or object features a little bit more. So let's go if, so we're gonna do the same start of the for loop. So for feature in the app, we're only gonna look at the objects this time. So we'll go df, and then feet. So we're going to go through that and we'll go dot d type equals to object. Okay. And so what we'll do if it's an object, what we're going to do is we're going to go actually let's put this in the print that I have here. So we'll, we're just going to look at the actual values. We don't want a graphic this time. So we're going to go print df dot feet and we're going to go dot value counts and then brackets, parentheses, sorry. And so what we'll do is we're gonna do, I like to just have fun. So we'll do this little, the diamond symbol times 20. So is gonna print out 20 times uh, in a row. We're not gonna get, we're gonna get a row of 20 diamonds. We run this, you'll see here, this is gives us a little bit more detail, especially for the industry column. How many, because we can see there's quite a few features that are don't really make up a very large portion of this. So maybe we could combine those if we're not getting good results. We could also look at see we see here temporary is a very low number, very imbalanced in this in this citizenship, but we can get some more texture, some specific numbers, and then again broken up by the nice diamond shapes. Okay. So I left this uh, commented out just to because it takes a little while to run. So you can run this on your own time, but this is the SNS pair plot where we'll get a whole bunch of bivariate plots. DF is the first argument, and then the hue is our target, so approved. So this will add color texture by the hue. But because it takes a little bit of a while run, we won't do that in live, and I'll let you explore that um, in your own time. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a heat map. So we're going to look at the correlations of the features with the target mainly, but all of the correlations and how they relate to each other. So we'll go df.core. So we'll call it seaborn.heatmap and in the heat map we'll go df.core which will give us a matrix of the correlation uh, relationship 
And then what we want to do here, so df.core, I want to set cmap equal to crest, just to make it a little bit prettier. I like the colors of the crest versus the standard one. And you can see here, I like this blue green kind of color. And you can see here that in terms of our approved feature, you can see that prior defaults has the highest relationship with that variable. And very easy, quick to tell. We can also see being employed, credit score, and maybe the next common one is years employed, have something to do with whether or not they got approved. So it's very valuable in knowing which features will be important for us. Another important thing is to really kind of put this down to the numbers. Like graphics are nice to easily spot something, but what we want to do is we're going to go dm.core with, and what we're going to do is give it a series. So we're going to go is we're going to give it the series df dot, or, and then we're going to select the approved column from this feature. So df.core width, and then give it the series that you want a correlation with. And you can see here an unordered version of the correlation. So what we'll do is we'll go dot sort underscore values, and this will just line them up in a nice little order. So we can see that zip code has literally the least to do with it, has a little bit of a negative correlation, but we can see age and all of the other features have a somewhat positive correlation getting into credit score, employment, prior default, like we saw with the heat map plot, we, those do have a higher correlation. But now we have some texture, we can see that prior default is significantly higher than the next closest employment.